Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is not the cure for heavy metal toxicity, but when it's used as part of the right framework, it could certainly accelerate the recovery process. In this video, I will explain how hyperbaric oxygen fits into a safe detox process, why the timing matters, and how to combine it with other strategies so that you're not pushing the body too hard, too fast. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders, and after 20 years of training practitioners and working with patients, I've developed a framework for dealing with heavy metals, and I wanna share that framework with you today. If we find out a patient has heavy metal toxicity, one of the first questions we get is, where did this come from? And you need to know that toxic metals are everywhere. They're in our food, they're in our water, they're in medications, they're in vaccines, they're all over our environment. Heavy metals are pervasive. While almost all of us have been exposed to heavy metals, some people tend to detoxify them pretty well on their own, while others seem to accumulate them over their lifetime. Heavy metals are also generational. In other words, your grandparents could have been exposed to certain heavy metals, which got passed down to your parents, which then got passed down to you. Heavy metals are well known to cross placental barriers, and getting rid of heavy metals will often require months of dedication. And it's important to realize that if you have heavy metals, your parents may have heavy metals and your children may have heavy metals. And so testing other people in the family could be really important from a long time health strategy. When it comes to testing heavy metals, there's really no perfect test for heavy metal toxicity. You could test blood, you could test hair, and you could test urine. Depending on the test, it shows different phases of heavy metal exposures. Blood tests will typically show acute exposures. Hair tests will often show past exposures that may still be current, but typically those are a historical view of heavy metal exposure. And a urine test, particularly what's called a provocative urine test, can really show heavy metal load or total heavy metal toxicity that a person is dealing with. There are times where we combine a number of different tests when we're really trying to assess heavy metal toxicity. But the provocative urine test, in my opinion, is the most accurate test for really assessing heavy metal toxicity. When it comes to chronic illness, particularly chronic inflammatory illnesses like autoimmune and neurodegenerative, but really almost all chronic illnesses come down to two main factors, deficiency and toxicity. Does the body not have everything that it needs to process and deal with and heal from whatever challenges it's facing? Or is there something inside of our body that's really inhibiting or getting in the way of our body being able to recover and heal appropriately? In most cases, chronic toxicity takes time, as I said earlier, to really get out of your body. And if you have issues with detox pathways, that's the place where it really needs to begin. And so before we start pulling heavy metals out, we usually spend four to six weeks just working on detox pathways, methylation pathways, sulfation pathways, and helping to nourish and heal the systems that allow us to pull toxins out of our body, our kidneys, our intestines, our skin, our liver. So we really want these organs and these systems to be as healthy as possible so that as we're pulling these toxins out of storage, they actually have a way to get out of your body, not just being pulled from one area and then being redeposited somewhere else. And that's an important point. In other words, again, we were talking about the different tests, like a blood test will show us acute exposures because once we're exposed, it will typically be floating around in our blood and we can catch that in a serum test. However, the body recognizes the toxicity and if it can't eliminate it, it will often push it into storage, into fat tissue, into bone. Certain metals like aluminum and mercury tend to embed themselves in fatty tissue around the nervous system, whereas other metals like lead tend to really get deposited in bone, and they could be stored there for years and decades before they accumulate high enough to become symptomatic. So this is really a multi-step process. Improve and upregulate all the detox pathways, then start pulling toxicity out of storage, and lastly, making sure that we're eliminating that toxicity throughout that period of time where we're doing our detoxification process. In many ways, the first stage of upregulating the detox pathways have a lot to do with replenishing deficiency, creating sufficiency inside those systems, nourishing the liver, nourishing the kidneys, nourishing our skin, nourishing our intestines, and really providing all of the vitamins and minerals required to make sure that those systems are operating at the most optimum levels possible. Step two, once we actually start to detoxify the body, now we're talking about using chelators, which often when I'm explaining this to a patient, I compare them to magnets when it comes to heavy metals. Things that are attracted to heavy metals that'll help pull them out of storage, and then binders, which will literally bind to and then hold on to these heavy metals to make sure that they're excreted out of the body, not redeposited somewhere else. Chelation is a term that we use when we're pulling heavy metals out of storage. 
Chelation could be done orally and chelation could be done through IV. I'm not saying either one is better or worse. For me in my practice, when we're doing chelation, for most people, we choose oral routes. They do take longer, but they're also less symptomatic. It's a less aggressive way to get rid of heavy metals. It's a longer way to get rid of heavy metals, but it's also a less symptomatic way to do it. IV is equally effective, potentially maybe more effective in a shorter period of time, but if you're sensitive and these metals are causing a lot of your symptoms, IV may be too hard, too fast, and it may elicit a lot of the symptomatology that somebody is suffering with. Common ingredients that are used in IV and or oral chelation would be DMSA, uh, EDTA, DMPS, chlorella, and zeolites. There are others as well. And then binders like activated charcoal, bentonite clay, apple pectin, and then humic and fulvic acids could all be used to help bind those to make sure that we're pulling them out and eliminating them from our bodies. Now, within that framework, I said earlier, the first step, which is upregulating detox pathways, that's typically a minimum of a four to six week process. We want to make sure that people are eliminating and eliminating effectively before we start chelating and binding. The chelating and binding process could last another eight to 12 weeks beyond the first four to six weeks. If a person is tolerating these very well, they're not becoming very symptomatic, we can keep pushing the dosages and help move this process along more quickly. If it is activating some symptoms and they're struggling, then we could also lower doses and spread them out. And although it will take a longer period of time, I like to do it in a way that the person is less aware of and reacting less to this entire detox process so that they can live and be comfortable and do everything they need to do while detoxing simultaneously. So where does HBOT fit this process? Okay, we're gonna get right back to that information in a minute. I just wanted to pause and share a new resource that we just finished developing. If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice, but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook. Just like we are staging the detox process through a variety of different ingredients, HBOT is an ingredient inside that detox process. So in the upregulation of detox pathways, hyperbaric is a nourishing component that does help increase liver function, kidney function, intestinal function, and skin function. So in the beginning, we're going to use it, but we're not going to be as aggressive with it. We're typically going to do two sessions a week during that first four to six weeks, where we are really just using hyperbaric and the oxygen associated with hyperbaric in upregulating those systems. As we get more into the actual detoxification, the chelation and binding process, we're going to ramp hyperbaric up a little bit because now we want to use the toxin inhibition and really push those toxins out of the body. And so we'll go from two a week to something more like four or five a week during that next eight weeks or so, where we're trying to push much harder and really eliminate this toxicity from the body. Now, each patient is gonna process this journey very differently, and we need to know where they stand at any given point. And so, one, we rely on symptoms, how they're feeling, how they're doing. Is this increasing their symptoms while they're pushing toxins out? Are they starting to feel a lot better because they're removing the toxins from their body? But we also wanna rely on objective measurements and retesting periodically. Typically, we will do a pretest before we start any of this process at all. We'll go through the first four to six weeks of ramping up the elimination process, and then we'll get into chelation and binding. After the eight to 10 weeks of this second phase, we're often going to start reducing the chelation process. We're going to start reducing hyperbaric. We're going to get more into a maintenance phase where we can now retest to see what the metals are showing. A really important point, especially if you're using a provocative urine test, that is not a measurement of how much toxicity a person has inside. It's a measurement of how much toxicity is coming out of them. And so what we hope for is that we get a certain measurement on that pretest. And then after going through a three to four month detoxification program, we hope to see that those numbers are now coming down because we've really eliminated quite a bit of the heavy metal burden. And so if that's what we find, we then stay inside that maintenance mode for another month or two to make sure that whatever's free floating has a chance to get eliminated from the body. There are times, however, that we do a pretest, we go through three or four months of heavy metal detoxification and chelation, and the follow-up test has gone up. That's difficult for patients to understand, but I want to explain this to you. In the first scenario, imagine we got a certain level, 
we went through the detox, but instead of waiting four months to test, we actually tested every week. What we should find is the pretest had a certain value, and that as we ramped up our detox program, we start seeing more and more coming out of the patient. That should eventually reach a peak and then start coming down. And what we're hoping for is that by the time we test them, it's at a lower level. But recognize it would have gone up before it would come down. In the case where your post-test shows a higher level, what that tells you is this person is still in their detox pathway. They're still heavily in the detoxification mode. And now we're just catching it at a higher peak which also means we need to keep going so that we can find that low end. And so we'll shift from that maintenance mode back into a similar phase two detox program, upregulating the chelators, upregulating the binders, and then reprogramming hyperbaric into that system. We'll go another four to six weeks. We'll ramp it back down into a maintenance mode, and then we'll retest again. And we will keep going through that until we finally get those lower levels that we're looking for back into safe levels or hopefully as low as possible, maybe even no trace amounts of any heavy metal inside their body. While there's not a tremendous amount of research on using hyperbarics for heavy metal detoxification, there is quite a bit of research done on what role hyperbaric plays on detox pathways and detoxification in general. But there's also a great case report that was done on ganolinium poisoning, which is a particular heavy metal that's used in quite a bit of imaging. I'll put a link to that case below where they treated this woman after gadolinium exposure and gadolinium toxicity, where all they did was hyperbaric and they got her gadolinium levels down and all of her symptoms to resolve. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Realistically, this is not a two week process. This isn't just like an intestinal cleanse that you're gonna do for two or three weeks and you're finished. This could be months long. In really complex cases, we've seen eight months, nine months, even 12 months of detoxification before we get those heavy metals to a really low level, to a safe level. And so you have to be patient if you're going through a heavy metal detox and you really want long lasting results. Due to the fact that heavy metals are so pervasive in our environment, if you've never been tested for heavy metals, I really suggest that you do. It's one of the main underlying factors to so much chronic illness that many of our patients are already suffering from or that are going to lead to chronic illness down the road. And so just as part of a regular routine check, periodically heavy metals should be evaluated and this detox process should be used even if you're asymptomatic. Many times, finding the real source of heavy metals in any given person is often very difficult, if not impossible. And especially if it's generational, there was nothing that you particularly did in your life that caused it. What I would tell most patients is if we find that you have heavy metals, we go through the detox journey, we get those levels low enough, you're finished. We might wait six months or a year and then retest. If they're still low or no exposure, you're done. In some cases, we get them to a low level, and then after six months or a year, those levels start climbing. If that ends up being you, then yeah, you may have an active source in your life. Checking your water, evaluating your food sources, having your dentist checking your teeth and any fillings that you have, especially if you have amalgam fillings, if they're intact or not, or in some cases you may wanna remove those amalgams regardless. But if that's not you and you get those levels down low enough and you retest at a period into the future where they're not reoccurring, then most likely you're finished. And other than that, like for me, once I went through this process once or twice, I now just do short versions of detox programs once or twice a year, just because I know that these are in our environment and I wanna keep them from accumulating in my body. So again, while HBOT is not the cure or the only thing that I would use for a heavy metal detoxification program, it most certainly is a very valuable contributor to the overall process. I see a lot of stuff online like, hey, take this chlorella if you think you might have metals, or hey, take this zeolite product and get rid of your heavy metals. And as if only one product is going to be the singular solution for your heavy metal burden. I can't get behind that. I really think that this is incredibly important for people to follow through with. And in almost every case, it's a multi-therapeutic, multi-dimensional process to go through. And that working with someone knowledgeable, not pushing too fast, not pushing too hard, going at a pace that's appropriate and addressing it through that multi-therapeutic window is going to be the key to having real long-lasting impact for removing any heavy metal burden that you may have.
I hope this video is helpful. If you're struggling with symptoms like this or you know somebody who is, please share this video with them. Look into getting some heavy metal toxicity testing and I wish you the best in that detox journey. I appreciate your time and attention and I'll see you on the next video. Maybe you just bought your first chamber or you're thinking about buying your first chamber. Maybe that's a home use chamber or perhaps you're considering offering hyperbaric inside your clinic. And if you're anything like me when I first started, you're realizing how much information there is out there and you're concerned, are you doing this the right way? Are you being safe? How am I gonna utilize this hyperbaric chamber in the most effective way possible? If you're just getting involved in hyperbarics and you're looking for an introductory training program, the basic hyperbaric technician program is exactly what you need. In this course, we're gonna cover how does hyperbaric work? Why does hyperbaric work? What makes hyperbaric oxygen such a unique therapy? What mechanisms of action are taking place? What are the benefits of hyperbaric, both short and long-term? And what types of indications are appropriate to utilize hyperbaric for? We will also help build your confidence, not only in how to utilize the therapy, but how to talk about this therapy with patients or with other healthcare providers that may not understand hyperbarics the way you will once you finish this course. So if you're ready to dive in, click the link below this video and let's get started.